upon request. This is 4.5 number nine. It looks something like this. And you're gonna have to know how to factor. If you don't know how to factor, you'll need to, you know, look at a couple things on YouTube. But if you can factor this, this is what it means to factor. You're finding two things that multiply together to get this. You're end up gonna get what, three X and X here. Uh, that's gonna be three and one. So right here, I'm not teaching you how to factor, but um, I'm assuming you know how to do that. If not, I'll have to show you that in a separate video. See, this is gonna be X plus three, X minus one. Okay, so first thing is to factor that. Now, remember to find your domain. It's what makes the bottom zero, okay? Because you can't ever have zero in the denominator. So I can see here that X, and by the way, I'm gonna kind of do that right there, but I still, if it doesn't work in the beginning, it will not work in the end either. So I can see X can't be negative three, because that would give me a zero, and X also can't be one. So when I write that in interval notation, I can include everything, everything negative, until I get to negative three. And then I put a parenthesis there, because I can't include negative three, but everything's good right after negative three. Notice these are the same number, and life is good until you get to one, can't use one, and then everything's good after one. And again, notice these are the same right there. So that's your domain. Your x-intercept is what makes the numerator zero. So these canceled out. So the only thing that would make the numerator zero, and if you don't see it, come over here to the side and set it equal to zero and solve it. Move your one to the other side so you see it's one third. So that is my x-intercept. So my x-intercept is one-third zero, okay? Okay, your y-intercept is when you let the x value be zero. And then you can use any of them. I always think this is easiest to look at my original equation. But if all your x's are zero, do you see how that's all gone? So all I'm left with is negative three over negative three. Well, negative three over negative three is one. So my y-intercept is one. So I've got that. Okay, your vertical asymptote is what makes the denominator zero. Okay, so remember your x-intercept is what makes the top zero. Your vertical asymptote is what makes the bottom zero. And um, these cancel. The only time you really look at this one is when you're thinking about the domain. But since these canceled, your only vertical asymptote is one. So it's x equals one. Okay, you either have a horizontal or an oblique. You can have both, so you're gonna have one or the other. In this case, you do have a horizontal asymptote because they have the same degree. If they have the same degree, then you just look at the coefficients out front. So my horizontal asymptote is gonna be three over one, which is three. So this is y equals three. Therefore, this would be none on your test. Do not leave that blank, okay? Make sure you say something there. All right, so that should be most of it. Then your homework gives you a lovely multiple choice, okay? Usually by process of elimination, I've noticed you've always been able to figure out your homework or your graph pretty quick. But let's put in what I know. The vertical asymptote is x is one. So right here, I'm gonna graph that in. There's my vertical asymptote. Remember, your graph will never touch a vertical asymptote. Sometimes it will cross a horizontal or an oblique. Never, never. Okay, here's my horizontal. Now, I noticed when I was looking at your homework that just with these two facts, you you could you could figure out which graph it was. I think that was only one graph that had the correct vertical asymptotes. But let's pretend it doesn't. Um, let's plot in what else we know. We knew there was an x-intercept of one-third, which would be about right there, and a y-intercept of one, so we had a point right there. Now, in each section, this vertical asymptote divides this graph into two sections. There is a graph in both sections. It will either be in the top above the horizontal or it'll be below. It cannot be both. Well, because I already have points below, I know this half, and I'm gonna have to kind of look through here. Hopefully this is nice and you can see it. It's gonna look something like this. Whoop, ah, didn't mean to touch that, but it's gonna look something like that. That's what I get for looking through my phone, okay? So here on this section, I know I either have something above or something below. Graphs of rational functions always look like that. You've graphed enough, you've kind of just come to find that. Well, look, I know it's not below because if I had something right here, it's gonna cross the x-axis and I didn't have any x-intercepts there. 
So by process of elimination, I know it has to go up here. I could also figure that out by just plugging in a point. I could pick anything over here, like two, three, four, five, who cares? And then plug it into your original equation, use your calculator, and it will give you a point, okay? But your graphs were multiple choice, so you should be able to figure that out pretty quick.